Hi crafty friends, it's Shana from Shinooki Art. This is a tab bound envelope photo holder. A cute way to store photos and ephemera from a special occasion and it's really fun to make. You don't have to use envelopes for the pages, but using envelopes gives you lots of little pockets and special places to tuck in your photos and trinkets. You can of course make this any size. You can use larger envelopes if you have bigger photos that you'd like to store. I found these photos that I had printed a few years ago from a family holiday we took back in 2019. I had printed them small for some project I'm sure, but I had forgotten about it and had stored them away. Having recently found them again, I thought to make a cute project to showcase them and have fun. In this video, I will show you step by step how to create this and it's a lot easier than it looks. And you can fill it with as much or as little as you want. It doesn't even need to be for photos. You can put it just ephemera or even your paint samples from your watercolors, your hand drawings, or even just notes and poems. Whatever you like, really. I also have a lot of these small white envelopes. They're quite old too. So their sticky is a little sticky, so it tears a bit when you open them, but of course we can definitely use them. I wanted to use a few of these, but then I also wanted to use something that wasn't just white. So I've gone through all my 6x6 six six papers just to find a few that suit the photo colours. And I'm also going to make some coloured envelopes for the project. Of course you don't have to make envelopes, you can use ready-made ones of any size. Use what you have or what suits the theme of your envelope photo holder. You also don't need an envelope punch board. I have one so I'm going to use that for some but I'll show you another way that you can make envelopes without having these tools. You can open up an existing envelope and use that as your template. So I've opened up one of my white small envelopes. I'm going to place it on my little paper and then I'm going to trace around it with the pencil and then cut it out. You also don't need a scoring board to be able to score the folds for the envelope. I use my ruler. I place the ruler along the line where I want my fold to be and then I press the paper up and against the ruler. This creates a straight fold line where I can then fold my envelope. Once I've pressed all the folds of the envelope down, I'm going to apply some double sided tape to seal it. You could also use glue, but you want something secure that won't unstick as you'll be putting things into your envelope and they may be coming in and out a few times as you show your project off. I'm now also going to make a few with other colors using the envelope punch board. If you'd like to know how to use the envelope punch board in case you have one and you're not sure how to do the measurements, do let me know in the comments and I'm happy to do a tutorial to show you how to go about making these envelopes. Once they're all scored, I'm going to round the edges. You could also leave them pointy if you prefer. The piece of the envelope that folds up to close, I don't like that to have a pointy end. A lot of times I will fold that corner down, but today I'm just going to make a mark and chop that piece off. And then we're going to close our envelopes using double sided tape. Once all our envelopes are made, we're going to put all of them together to see how we want them when we're paging through our little envelope book. 
You can see if you want the top part to be flapped back and stuck onto the envelope or if you want the opening on the inside or the outside. I recommend more on the outside of the book as it's easier to get your bits and pieces in and out. But have a fiddle with it, try different ways and see what you like. I'm going to add some additional interest to mine and I'm going to add some vellum pockets onto envelopes. As I always say, make sure that your vellum is always bigger than what you're going to need. It is so much easier to sew this when it's not exactly aligned as the vellum can slip under the foot of the sewing machine. I'm then going to run this under my sewing machine just with a quick running stitch along the sides and the bottom of the vellum pocket. I'm then going to trim off the excess vellum. At this point I realized that I had sewn the vellum on the wrong side of the envelope. Not the front or the back, or I mean the top and the bottom. It was meant to be sort of on the other end of the envelope front. But I eventually worked it out and made it work in my little book. And this is where my brain is ticking and I'm trying to work out how I'm going to put it in the book. I've opened up one of the small white envelopes and I'm sticking the top flap onto the one side of my one colored envelope just for a point of difference and to bring a break of white on the pink envelope. Now to assemble this book and to attach all the envelopes together, we're going to use the tab binding method. Originally I was going to use masking tape, but it was a bit too wide and cutting it didn't really work. So I decided to use some washi tape. I chose a color that suited my project. You could also use fabric or even strips of paper. You can put as few or as many tabs as you want for your project. I'm going to put four in total. I think that's sufficient to hold this together. For the first page, we're going to put two. We're going to space them out as evenly as we can. I'm going to put one near the top of the small envelope and one about two thirds down. I am adding some glue stick to the washi tape as it doesn't stick great and I'm scared this will fall apart. Some glue will help it stick better. I'm going to position my other two pieces of washi tape just for spacing. It doesn't have to be perfect and of course you could measure and have it exact. I'm happy just to eyeball the measurements and get them roughly even. I'm not sticking the other two washi tape pieces down. I'm using them only to measure. We're now going to turn this over and take our next envelope or piece of paper. We're going to align it and apply the washi tape in the opposite sections of where the original washi tape is. So it'll be in between. A little hard to explain in words, but you can see what I'm doing in the video. We're then going to place this green envelope over the pink envelope as if we're paging through the book. Once we've placed it in the position where it's going to be, we're going to stick and push up the first two washi tapes from the pink envelope and stick them onto the green. That is what is going to hold the pink and green envelope together. We're now going to take our next envelope and do the same. For this one, we're going to apply the washi tape again at the top position and the third position, if that makes sense. So if you count the pieces of washi tape, one, two, three, four, we're going to apply this in position one and three. And again, we're going to flap this envelope over as if we're paging in the book. And then we're going to stick the washi tape that's on the green envelope onto this floral envelope. So we're alternating the positions of the washi tape and also what we're sticking up onto the envelope that we've just turned over. It sounds so complicated when I say it, but it actually is pretty simple. And I think the demonstration of the video is quite clear. So I'm going to continue to do this until all my envelopes are attached. I found using washi tape a really good option for this so that you can reposition it if you need 
because the first time can be a little tricky I've seen some people also use fabric which looks beautiful and you can use a craft glue for that which will also allow you some time to move it if you need but once you've done the first two pages and you're into a rhythm it becomes much easier mine are not 100 percent aligned and i'm okay with that i don't like everything to be perfectly measured some people do and that's also perfectly okay you can measure your positioning of your tapes with a ruler to get them exact mine a little bit up and down but I like a bit more of that homemade feel. It's all personal preference. Do yours the way you like to do it. Now for the last page, we're not going to add its own washi tape. We're just going to place it in the back where we want it to be and we're going to stick the two underlying washi tape pieces onto the back and this will keep it in place. Having a quick page through, you can see how cute that looks. I'm now going to start decorating my little envelope book. The first thing I want to do is create some kind of a closure for each of the envelopes so that when the flap comes down, it's not just sort of flapping around. I want it to be tucked underneath something. So for this page, I have a little ready-made tag and I'm going to stick this down and I'm going to allow the bottom right-hand corner to not have any glue and that's where the top part of the envelope is going to tuck under to close. For the floral envelope, I have this little ready-made die cut. It came with the 6x6 paper pad. I'm going to apply a little bit of glue on the bottom half of the circle and then stick that at the bottom and then the corner of the envelope will tuck in the top part of the circle. For the green envelope, I'm going to use a vintage style sticker for the closure. The sticker is quite flimsy, so I'm going to attach it to a piece of cardstock to make it more sturdy. I'm also going to apply glue stick underneath the sticker to make sure that it stays stuck well. I'm then going to attach it to the bottom of the envelope, leaving the top left corner without any glue so that the point of the envelope can tuck in there for the closure. I use a baby wipe to wipe up any glue that might have squeezed out underneath from the sticker. For this white one, I'm just going to use a large paper clip to keep that closed. For this blue one, I'm going to create a little slit in the bottom where the little corner is going to tuck in. So I'm just marking with my pencil where I want this to be. I'm then going to put a couple of pieces of cardboard inside underneath so that my exacto knife doesn't cut through the entire envelope. Unfortunately, my cutting mat corner did not fit in here, so I had to make another plan. And then using a metal ruler and my exacto knife, I'm just going to make a cut on the mark that I had made with the pencil, and then the little corner of the envelope will tuck in there to close. I'm then going to just rub out the pencil marking. I have opened up the white envelope and I'm going to stick the flap onto the other side. I was thinking to make this into a pocket, but that may change. And now all my open envelopes have a closure. Each one a little different. I'm now going to trim all my photos. I had them specifically printed in this smaller style. I really don't remember what project it was for, but I'm really glad I found them because it's perfect for this project. And also it helps me remember how young my kids actually were five years ago. They have grown so much since then. I'm now going to go ahead and start decorating my little photo holder with the photos. I'm going to tuck some into the envelopes, some are going to be stuck onto the envelopes. I'm not going to talk through the entire process, I'll just chat about what I'm doing at the specific times when I'm doing something new. It doesn't matter if the photos are one on top of the other or all just in an envelope. The idea is to actually take the photos out and have a look at them and then pop them back in. 
So not like your standard album where you're just flipping through it. This one is a little bit more interactive. I must confess, it did take me quite a while to get organized and decide what photo is going where and how I'm going to style this. But once I got going with the first couple of photos, it moved a little faster. I started with the cover of the little photo holder. This for me sort of sets the theme and it helped me to finish the rest of the pages. I have this cute acetate roll which looks like the retro Photo negatives, I'm going to use that in some of the background. I think it's really cute. I've gathered some elements that suit my color theme. I'm just going to move some things around and just see how I'm going to position all the pieces for my cover. This does change quite a bit. Sometimes it works out really quickly, other times it takes me a bit longer. Once I'm sure of something is when I start to glue. The destination for this holiday was Phillip Island, so I'm just going to hand write that onto a piece of cardstock and stick that as part of the album cover. I'm also going to add the month and the year somewhere on the cover. I want to frame the word Phillip Island, so I'm going to stick that onto a backing paper. I'm finding a nice floral that matches. So I'm going to stick that down just with double-sided tape, and then I'm going to trim around it, leaving about two to three millimeters as the border. Trying a few different elements, I like this pink die cut, I think it'll look really nice behind the wording. But I feel at this point it's a little too pink, I want to add something a little bit more blue. So I have these rub-ons, these are available from Topology. So I'm going to put a blue flower rub-on on the background and then put the pink die cut on top of that. It looked better in my mind and I wasn't quite happy with it once I'd actually done it. But that's okay, we can work with this. I'm going to stick these down and move on. I'm also using some ready-made journal cards in coordinating colors. I'm going to fold some of these in half, stick some photos on them, put some tabs, tuck them in. I'm also going to use them to write places or things that we did.
You can also attach additional ephemera or photos just with paper clips, small paper clips, in and around the project. A good way to make everything cohesive, I like to add a little border on my photos with matching cardstock from the project. Not on all the photos, just on some. I'm adding a piece of that negative type of acetate at the bottom of this photo just to ground everything onto the page. These floral washi tape stickers that I'm using in this page and some little ones you'll see that I'm using later on in the project are available from Kmart here in Australia. I'm also going to stick some photos directly onto the pages or envelopes. There really is no right and wrong here. Do it whichever way you like. Just to add some interest and to match up with all the writing that I'm doing with a black fine liner pen, I'm going to use the same pen and just scribble around some of the photos. Just very roughly, I want it to look freehand and hand drawn. I don't want it neat. And I've gone around a couple of times. I've gone back to the cover. I wasn't really happy with it. And that's one thing about this paper crafts. You can go back and make changes, whether you're doing junk journals or art journaling. It doesn't have to always be the way you finish it. You can always add more, you can cover things up. I want to add this photo and I feel it makes a better cover for my little photo album. The little tabs I used in my journal card were just stickers, so they've come apart when I've tried to remove it from the envelope. That's okay, I'm just going to reattach everything with glue.
Unfortunately, at this point, the battery died on my phone while I was filming and I didn't realize it. So I finished the entire project not knowing it actually wasn't filming the end part of this project. But I think you get the idea. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video. I really hope you enjoyed it and were inspired to create your own tab bound envelope photo holder. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell so you're notified every time I upload new content. Happy creating and I'll see you again soon. Bye.